Hi there everybody and welcome to my brand new series of videos called Totem Tuesday. Now this is a new series of videos I wanted to bring in for 2013 but I'm going to make a <laughs> statement first that usually my videos are filmed and produced painstakingly by my lovely partner Gordon. Um, but these Totem Tuesday ones are just going to be done with me and my camera phone. Um, so they won't have the usual nice quality <laughs> that my other videos have. However, I wanted to do more of a just a chat-based video for this, and just to be able to do this every Tuesday, I thought I'd just do it on my own here. Um, so, Totem Tuesday, you can guess what day this comes out. And you can also guess what it'll be about, power animals, animal totems. Now, in all my videos, um, I feel like a stuck record because I say, you know, that I'm talking about what I am passionate about. Um, and really no more the case when I'm talking about animals and animals with spirituality. So power animals and totem animals is something that for many years I've been really fascinated, intrigued and involved with. So with Totem Tuesday, they're going to be fairly short videos, well I say that, I'll, I'll probably end up talking for a while. Um, and I'm not going to go into right now what is and what isn't a power animal, what is a totem animal. I hope that over the period of the videos this will become clear and I hope that any questions you may have you'll feel free to ask and I'm also running workshops throughout the year on tuning in and working with your power animal but I, th I was going to write about this in a blog but I thought maybe it's nice to talk about it maybe it's nice to have uh, the visuals and to be able to talk through different power animals and so the first animal that I would love to talk about this week is the snow leopard um, as you can see, I've come dressed as the power animal. <laughs> I won't do it every week. Probably not anyway. I might do. We'll see. Um, but the snow leopard is an exceptionally special power animal to me. Um, they're all, you know, every animal, every animal that you encounter in the magical in the real world is power, is beauty, is important. You know, whether your power animal is a dormouse or whether it's an elephant or a wolf, it it doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean that one is less or more than the other. Uh, size doesn't mean anything in power animal world. Um, it's what you do with it, and how you work with it. Um, but the snow leopard is is the first animal that I want to speak about. And what I'm going to be doing, hopefully, is I'm going to be talking about the magical and the spiritual aspects of the totem snow leopard, but also the real, the the practical, the this world aspect of a living, breathing snow leopard as well, and how we can work with such an elusive creature. So snow leopards, people with snow, uh, basically what I'd like to say as well, here we go, um, is read the books, enjoy reading all the power animal books, Ted Andrews writes some amazing ones, there's some beautiful books out there, but don't take that as gospel that if you encounter a certain animal it means A, B, C and D. You know, you sometimes see lots of keywords that come up with power animals. What I would say is don't take that as gospel. Explore for yourself. Journey for yourself. Meditate for yourself. Find out what this power animal means to you. I brought my little mini totem with me. <laughs> my little power animal. Um, so, to snow leopards. People with a snow leopard totem um, really need to focus on the energy of spirituality and the divine, uh, the high places, um, solitude, silence, and the amazing ability to stalk your prey, whatever that may be, whether you've got a goal that you are focusing on, whether there's something you really want, there's no better um, predator and stalker than a snow leopard. They are, they are silent, they live in the silent places of the mountains, they walk with their paws turned in, so the, the outside part of their paw will, will touch the floor first. So they can test the ground and therefore not make any necessary noise to scare off their prey. So many people with um, snow leopard totems can practice walking like that, practice walking in silence. They have to have extremely amazing balance because of the environment which they live in, the high rocky mountains. They live in the mountains of Asia. It covers countries such as Afghanistan, Pakistan, Tibet, Kazakhstan, Russia and China. Despite this great um, area which they cover, 
they are very very much endangered and very much on the endangered list and need are looking after. I did read that there was between three and a half thousand and seven thousand left in the wild. Of course they can't be sure exactly how many they are because they are just so elusive um, and the energy of elusiveness is something to work with with a snow leopard totem as well. They are so endangered because of their habitat being taken with farming, even into the, what we call the wilderness. Um, we, as people we are reaching out into, we are moving out into, um, and also because people hunt them for their fur. Uh, because people are broaching so much on their land, um, the, the snow leopard ends up um, taking the, the farmers, sheep and goats, etc., and can often be embroiled in uh, fights with humans, as in not fights with them, but actually being shot by by the, the farmers who are living on the edge as, as it is and can't afford to lose their sheep. Um, I'll say this as well, that snow leopards, even though are completely capable of taking down a human, they they, they, they don't. They don't. They, they're capable, they do not hunt humans or eat humans or... Yeah, which is an amazing thing because they are capable of it and they have the chance to. Um, it was thought that um, that snow leopards only drank the blood of their prey um, because of the puncture marks they make on the neck which suffocates uh, their prey and allows them to eat them. So the thought was that, that the snow leopards simply drank the blood of their prey and in old, you know, folklore that the blood was the life impure and that flesh was impure. So purification is an amazing um, link with how people see the snow leopards. Not just for that, but because of being from the mountains, being from the white snow, being from the high places. Um, yeah, so purification and renewal of energy is a great, a great word, a link to the snow leopard. Talking of the mountains and the high places, they've always been a place apart from us humans, the places where gods reside. So it's no uh, surprise that the elusive snow leopard has been thought of as almost a godlike creature, as almost a mythical creature. Many folklore and folk tales uh, exist about the snow leopard, and it's only maybe more in recent days where conservation and filming of the snow leopard has made it more real to people, sometimes a bit too real to people, that they feel they can hunt them and uh, not worry about the fact that they're endangered. So yes, back to being in the mountains, in the high places, um, the folklore of around the Himalayas is that in the mountains, in the high places, it's called, oh, again, excuse my pronunciation, I probably don't pronounce this correctly, the Mergic Realm, or the Mergic Realm. Sounds like magic, doesn't it? The Mergic Realm. And powerful and pure beings lived in the Mergic Realm, high in the mountains, high in the clouds. And these were beings that would protect the sacred earth. These were beings that would be spirits of place, um, caring about the nature. And also, they were pure beings. So people would only be allowed to enter the mountains with the, with the permission of the Mergicans and that they would have to respect the laws and the sacred land. So the snow leopard has been woven in with the myth of the magicians um, because they come from the high places and also people who went to the magic realm often turned into animals and the magicians would come down to the human realm in the shape of an animal and more often than not that shape would be the snow leopard. So a shape-shifting energy is there a uh, divine energy is there with the snow leopard totem and with the snow leopard itself. So people who are working either with their life path animal being the, the snow leopard or just for a short space of time in their life, maybe snow leopard has come to them in dreams or they feel drawn to working with snow leopard energy for a short amount of time. Um, the energy of solitude because a snow leopard only mates and meets with other snow leopards through mating and then with their the female obviously with the cub for um, I think 22 months I think approximately. <laughs> um, so they're very much loners. Now that, I think there's a double-edged sword with this within power animal energy. This doesn't mean uh, anyone with a snow leopard totem must only ever be on their own and not socialise but it is important for snow leopard people to have that solitude at time 
to go off on that mission to search, to learn and to come back to the others, to the people that they know and love and care about and share the wisdom. Solitude is important but not a permanent state of, unless you obviously really want to. Um, silence, knowing when to speak, knowing when to be quiet. Um, purification, as I mentioned. Magic and the divine, the high places. So these are people with uh, the totem of the snow leopard will be drawn to a magical path, a spiritual path, a path which communes with the divine. Uh, maybe to awake the divine within them. If a snow leopard comes to you in a dream or in a meditation, you're honoured because they're very elusive, even in meditations. <laughs> um, maybe it's telling you to awake the divine within yourself, to renew your energy, to face your fears and to move forward. Um, other aspects of the of the snow leopard is because they're very unaggressive compared to other big cats and um, uh, wild animals. They, they, they're amazing hunters but they're not aggressive. This could show you, or the least aggressive, <laughs> this could show you how to focus your life and your energy um, and your anger. Um, and also things for people to work with with snow leopard totem are... Um, I guess looking at the myths and the magic of this, is shape-shifting, is song, is weaving myth as well as maybe storytelling could be something you would like, poetry. Um, the ancestors and the direction of, of north is also something we link with um, the snow leopard. So mountains, high places, the, the north, the north wind, um, and our ancestors. So maybe this is something that you'd be working with if you'd be working with snow leopard energy. As I always like to sort of say with, with power animal stuff, it is best if you can get out there and, and witness these animals. Unless you live in the mountains of, you know, of, of Asia, you probably don't have much chance to go out there and witness a snow leopard. From what I've seen and what I've studied, people can spend years searching for a snow leopard and maybe only seeing the footprints in the snow, if that. Um, but maybe that's enough. Maybe it's not the seeing of the snow leopard that's important with... Uh, searching for that snow leopard energy it's the quest it's the journey it's the spiritual path where it leads us the magic and the mystery rather than seeing and witnessing and experiencing um, so these are things you can be looking at and ideas to meditate on with snow leopard energy uh, but as I said we can't often go and see snow leopards what we can do is this maybe find a DVD I've got one here that I watch quite regularly and the cats love it as well they've been watching it this morning with me uh, it's natural world snow leopard beyond the myth so it's about a 50 minute DVD that you can just witness the snow leopard so a really lovely DVD it works with the it shows you you know how the villagers and the people that live in the mountains see them and all this kind of thing so it's fascinating um, on a more magical and beautiful level, I absolutely adore this book by Jackie Morris, the, the illustrator Jackie Morris, and the writer, she wrote this as well, um, it's called Snow Le The Snow Leopard, and it talks about a mythical, magical snow leopard who weaves hope into the lives of the people around, it's beautiful, it is a children's book, but it's one that can be appreciated and adored by adults as well as children. Um, read about the snow leopard, meditate on the snow leopard, and you can see them in captivity. I have seen a snow leopard in captivity and I, I have very mixed emotions about that and I felt quite sad about that. It, you know, it wasn't the most beautiful experience, really. Um, in a way, it's better to, well, it's up to you what you prefer, but I prefer looking at the idea of them being in the wild. And I'm going to, you know, give you some ideas. I will do a meditation another time on, on meeting a snow leopard uh, power animal or totem. Um, but just the idea is to visualise yourself Take the usual steps to get into meditation and then visualise yourself climbing up a strong path through snowy mountains. Visualise yourself walking through the path and the snow fluttering down and then as the snow clears you ask for the snow leopard to come to you. That's a way to start a meditation, an idea, and just see what, how that energy goes. You, you may not you know, see the snow leopard, as I said, they're elusive even in meditations and dreams. But you may get a, a hint, um, you may get a message or a, a paw print. Finally, before I, I leave you guys alone, um, people with snow leopard totems often find that they are most potent, most energetic in the night because snow leopards often hunt in the night or at twilight times, dusk and dawn. These are times when snow leopards aren't most active. 
So here are some starting points. I would also love, love to know if you have any myths or stories of snow leopards. If they've come to you in your dreams, in your visions, or if you've been lucky enough maybe to even have a sighting or a journey somewhere. Thank you very much for watching my very first Totem Tuesday um, and I hope you enjoy learning about the magical snow leopard. Till next Tuesday. Bye.